Hey, what's going on guys? Ryan Weber with Ryan Weber Training. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get you motivated, even if you're depressed, you're lacking motivation, and you just feel completely lost. Stick around, this is gonna help a lot of people. Hey, welcome back. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today with this episode. This is gonna be a good one. I'm gonna get right to the point. This video is gonna be about how to get motivated. Now, there's a lot of interviews and a lot of podcasts and information on the internet, and they give you some great speeches, some great theories. I wanna talk a little bit from experience. You know, maybe you guys don't know much about my experience, but growing up, I had a difficult time in high school, uh, mentally, physically, and emotionally. It's not something I talk about very much, but I was one of those guys that, you know, I wanted nothing more than to fit in, but I felt like I just kinda of got picked on. Now, maybe part of that was just my demeanor and how I came across, maybe the other part was because I was really like, you know, frail and thin, so I was an easy target. And then you know what? The other part is just, I can't explain it. You guys, sometimes in life, things happen. You don't know why they happen but depending on how you look at you know your, your current circumstances or past circumstances and depending on what you learn from that and how you can grow from that it can set the stage for a whole new level of success and just about anything in your life so that's what I want to talk about today so one of the first things I want to talk about is you want to identify your fear now okay wow that's really groundbreaking Ryan thanks a lot I want to get motivated what do I want to identify my fear for and I'm gonna tell you because think about how many times when you talk to somebody and they say well I want to do that I'm just afraid okay what are you afraid of well, I don't know I don't know you know when you ask people what they're afraid of, chances are 90% of the people can't tell you what they're afraid of, unless it's like snakes or spiders or dogs or something along those lines. When it comes to a deep emotional, I guess, uh, objection or obstacle somebody's facing, they really don't know why they're afraid. So what I'm challenging you to do is to go inside yourself, to get quiet, to meditate, you know, see a therapist if you need to, read some books, listen to stuff like this, but figure out for yourself, spend some quiet time alone with yourself and just ask the question, what am I afraid of? You do not have to have the answer right away. As a matter of fact, you probably will not get the answer right away. What you really should do is sit down with a journal and write that question at the top of the page and aim to have 20 to 25 reasons or 20 to 25 things you're afraid of. And just start writing it out. You, know, you might realize the first couple are kind of like, eh, not really, not really, nothing. But the more you do this and the more you stick with it and the more you can actually write things out and get to it, you're gonna get closer and closer to that root cause that is really holding you back. Now I can tell you from working with a lot of people on a pretty deep emotional level, whether it's fitness, whether it's increasing their confidence, whether it's trying to organize the thoughts of their mind and you know organize all the chaos up here that we all have, a lot of the times what people are afraid of is something that's gonna be very personal. It can be very personal back to something when they were a child and didn't really realize it. It could have been some sort of a uh, traumatic event or it could just be you know sometimes the company that people keep growing up. And I know we can't always control control that, but sometimes there's these different thoughts and these different ideals and things that are ingrained into our mind and all the stuff that we own, all this garbage that we own, and it really isn't ours and it clouds out who we really are, what we're really trying to become. So I really want you guys to take some time with this and use this exercise as a way to just identify what you're afraid of. Because when you identify what you're afraid of, when you acknowledge what you're afraid of, you're now taking away the power. You know, if you realize, oh my gosh, I got bullied when I was a kid, I got the crap kicked out of me, and I like this girl and it happened in front of that girl and now I'm afraid to go talk to girls okay there you go you know it's kind of a silly example right now but then again I bet you what I bet you uh, more so than not that's probably an example for somebody that actually happened to me I can admit it you know and I actually struggled for a couple of years in my life and I had to think what the heck is going on and uh, you'd be surprised the things that come up it's not information that's going to be readily available because it's not something you're really thinking about a lot of the people are a lot of people I guess are put up probably caught up more in the actual emotion and the feeling, the present feeling, but when you can set that aside for a second and just focus in and you know, the actual why, where that fear comes from, identify it, acknowledge it, now you know what it is and now you can come up with a plan and you can work with somebody or just yourself and you can get around that obstacle, you can go through the obstacle or you can just blow the obstacle out of your way. Now, the next thing I want you guys to do is I want you to take some sort of action. Okay, wow, take some sort of action. What are you talking about? 
What I'm talking about, guys, is when you have an idea on something, okay? Because we're talking about motivation right now. First, we talked about you know fear, identify that fear, acknowledge that. The next thing you want to do is you want to take action to move towards your goal. So set a goal, move towards your goal. Take some sort of an action to move away from the fear, to move past the fear. Take some sort of an action whenever you have an idea. When you first figure out the problem of something, okay? When you first realize you have a problem, solutions are gonna come. When you first get those solutions, some of those solutions are gonna be really good ideas. The best ones are the ones that you should be acting on right away. You should probably keep a journal and write these things down because things are gonna fly into your mind when you're doing stuff like this. You don't even realize you know, how powerful or how important it is, you know, how much relevance it actually has, or where even these ideas are coming from. But I'm telling you, when you really start to like dig inside of yourself and you open yourself up, things happen, things shift, things move. In order to keep that momentum going, to stay on the right path, to get yourself motivated, you wanna take immediate action. You do not wanna sit idle, okay? Idle is being mediocre. Mediocre is just settling. Settling is what makes people miserable, and being miserable is probably one of the leading causes of uh, you know, holding people back from reaching their goals. It's uh, probably definitely linked to a fear of some sort, and it's probably most likely the reason why so many people get stuck and they just can't get past themselves and they don't really, they don't really know what's going on. You know, some of this stuff can sound a little silly, like it's not connected, but I can guarantee you guys, it definitely is. So take it to heart. When you can take action, when you can do something quick, as soon as you get a good idea, put it into action. The speed of implementation, it is gonna make a huge difference. It's gonna shift your energy so fast and so furious that when you look back six months to a year from now, you're gonna be wondering, oh my gosh, who is this person talking about you right now? You know, you're gonna be thinking, what was it? What was it that actually just got me going? Was identifying your fear and then taking action to move beyond that fear, okay? That's like the weakest point in life when fear is gonna be at its weakest point. When you identify it and then you take action. At that point, all you have to do is just keep one foot in front of the other, metaphorically speaking, and you're gonna be good. You're gonna be so much better off than if you didn't do these things in the first place. Next thing, guys, I want to talk about, and this is going to be the third one for this video because I can go on and on and probably about 100 things, but these are going to be really important and really supportive for you to get going now, something you can start doing right now. I want you to choose your friends wisely. Your environment has such a huge impact on your psychology, how you think, how you feel, your emotions. All this is going on at a deep subconscious level. You may not realize even when a shift is happening in your mind or in your body, Actually, a lot of the times people don't, you know, if you're really in tune and tapped in and in touch with yourself and in touch with this type of a work, this type of work and this type of progress that, that people uh, can make, you might be, you, you will be able to kind of recognize and realize when you're starting to go through a shift. But I tell you what, it's one of those things that just creeps up on you and when you least expect it, it's got you. And then you have to be like, okay, why am I feeling like this? You gotta kind of do some deductive reasoning. You gotta go backwards. Okay, I feel like this right now. What did I do? What happened? A lot of the times it's gonna be the people you surround yourself with. And I'm not talking anybody down. I'm not saying to pass any judgments. Um, people you surround yourself with in your environment, you know, the mastermind idea, the mastermind principle, you're gonna be no greater than the five people you surround yourself with the most. Now, maybe the five people you surround yourself with the most are great people and you like these people. But if you have an idea and if you have a goal and if you have a dream in your mind, okay, Okay? And none of these people are the type of people who can support you or believe in you to achieve this type of goal, then you might want to start looking for support from another area. Now, let's say some of these people are family or really close friends and you know you don't want to ruin the relationship. I completely understand that. And please do not ruin the relationship. Relationships are so important and so vital. But you can limit your time. You can guard your mind against things that people may say or do. Don't take it personally. And uh, this way you're kind of protecting yourself from some negative influences and negative ideas that really may not be yours or really serve you to get to that next level and to find your purpose in life. So just to give you an example, let's say uh, you know, you're a young guy and, or you're a young lady and you're at home, you're living with your parents and maybe the parents are stressed out because you know, there's money problems going on or in the state of our world affairs right now, there's just a lot of uncertainty and you know, uh, distrust issues and things going on and just in the world and you, know, you can sense that your, your parents are maybe afraid, okay? And rightfully so, like I completely get it. I'm a dad, I got you know, two kids, dog, wife, and uh, there's 
there's some things that I have to kind of check myself, you know, before I come into the house and I think, okay, hey, Ryan, you good, right? Okay, so what you want to do in that respect is, you know, be as loving and supportive and understanding as you possibly can. But at the same point, it's okay to distance yourself a little bit and to put yourself maybe, you know, in a bedroom, put on some headphones, go online, watch something motivational, watch something inspirational. Do something that makes you feel good, whether it's going to the gym and working out, whether it's hanging out with a friend, whether it's calling somebody up and having a good conversation. Maybe even just calling up somebody who's struggling themselves and asking, hey, how can I support you? You know, it says in the Bible, one of the greatest leadership books of all time, I'm telling you, if you haven't read it, do it. If you haven't read, if you haven't read it, do it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it talks about, you know, one of the things you need to do or should do when there's something in your life that you really want is ask yourself, who else can you give that thing to? Now, it may sound like a very counterintuitive idea, but for instance, um, I'm thinking of a story right now of Tony Robbins. You guys, probably most of you know who Tony Robbins is. He said that he hit a low point in his life and he was out to dinner. He had like maybe nine or $18 in his pocket. He didn't really have much money, but that was the last of what he had. You know, he had pretty much lost everything, sold everything. It was right after he had, this is right after he had a little bit of success and he kind of just plateaued and then he crashed, but he went out to dinner. It was a buffet, all you can eat. And I think he said he spent half of his money. He spent like $9. He just completely filled up. He ate everything he possibly possibly could. On his way out, he says a young man, probably, you know, second, third grade age, I was walking in with his mom and something about the kid just spoke to him. So he walked up to the kid and he goes, young man, I see you're dressed up very nice. What's a special occasion? And he goes, taking my mom out on our, our first date. And he goes, are you really? He goes, yeah, yes, I am. So moved by this, Tony Robbins reaches into his pocket and he pulls out the rest of the $9 he had left. He handed it to her and he says, listen, in honor of your first date, I want you to treat your mother to the best best dinner she's ever had. Can you do that for me? He said, little boy smiled, took the money and ran off. Tony felt really good. And as he's walking out of the restaurant, you know, he's, you know, he, he's enlightened. He's like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. And at the same point he realized, oh, crap, I have no money. I don't have two pennies to rub together. To get to the point, the next day he got a letter and a check in the mail from a friend of his who said, hey, I'm sorry I owed you some of this money. I know it's been a very long time. I put in some extra to, um, to make up for the difference, to make up for all the lost time. And I think he said the check was maybe like $1,200 or $1,500. I forget the actual amount, but regardless, he went from having nothing to that check, which pretty much gave him a huge boost uh, for what he needed at that time. And then he actually made a positive connection between giving away that which he wanted so badly to being able to receive it back in abundance. And it talks about this in the Bible too, guys. So definitely check it out. But um, that's it, guys. I can talk a lot more about this. I really just wanted to make sure that I got a couple of points across. I wanted to make, keep this simple and to the point. And I really wanted to give you something simple that was just going to be motivating and inspiring and something you can actually do right now. So a quick recap, what did we talk about? We talked about how to get motivated. We talked about you want to identify your fear. When you identify your fear, when you can acknowledge your fears, you then take away the power that it has over you. Okay. We talk about taking some sort of an action. So when you take an action after you identify your fear, you're able to to quickly move past and create some momentum going in the right direction. You're not going to sit idle. You're not going to go backwards. You always want to be moving. You always want to be moving forwards. And then the last thing we talked about: choose your friends wisely. We talked about your environment and how your environment, the five people you hang around with the most, can have a very big impact on your emotional state, your being, and your whole psyche. So you want to make sure that you can create you know, the right environment to set yourself up for success. Or if you can't get out of the current environment, you can do some things to support yourself in the meantime until you do have the means to remove yourself and get around better people, better places. And again, that's a no judgment to any family or friends that you may think are maybe the reason that you're, you're being held back. And I bring this up, you guys, because I think at some level or some point in life, we've all kind of felt like, you know, if I was just on my own, I was away from these people when, um, you know, really these people are family and friends. They love us very much and they want the best for us and they will always do everything they can in their power, in my experience, to give you what they have. But if they don't have it, they can't give it to you. So 
really just approach that situation, you know, with some, with some love, with some you know, earnest respect, and uh, I guarantee you will find a way to overcome and to lift people up around you that much higher because you've been doing the same thing for yourself. So, awesome, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If there's a video or a topic you guys want me to talk about, please let me know. And um, smashing that like button, sharing out these videos, subscribing, that's all gonna help me grow this channel. I'm working on building a studio, I'm working on building a new website. There's a lot of things that I'm working on and you know, I'll leave you guys with this last thought. Rather than waiting for everything uh, in my business and my life to be perfect right now, because it isn't. Like I'm working, I'm learning, I'm growing, it is what it is. But I decided to do what I'm telling you in this video. I identified some of my fears, I'm taking some sort of an action, and I'm constantly working to put myself around better people, better leaders, so in turn, I can become a better person, a better leader, not just for myself, but for my family, for friends, and for people who I'm never probably even going to meet, but I can just leave them with some sort of impression of increase. If I can increase your life in some way, and I don't even know you, I know at some point my life is gonna increase and get better, and this is really what it's all about. I'm not doing this for me, I am doing this for you, and by having that serviceable attitude, I really believe that good things will happen for all of us. So, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching, and until next video, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Peace out, guys.